All right, howdy, howdy. So I'm up on the shipping container. I'm doing these, uh, these panels. And uh, just a quick view of the back, how I'm doing it here. I gotta do some more bracing on this one. Like I just did the 45 on the bottom and I ran out of wood, but I went and got some more. So I'm gonna 45 the bottom of these stands and the corners up here all the way across. Okay. Um, I've got five of these panels. <laughs> uh, when I ordered them, I could only afford, I had like this budget for solar panels. And um, so when I, when I placed the order, I just ordered as many as I could for the, the amount of money I had, not realizing that the odd number uh, was gonna screw me over. So I need to order one more. So today I'm hooking up, I'm mounting these four panels and I'm gonna wire them up to my other charge controller and uh, you guys can see how I do it. So let's go. All right, that's what these two look like so far. Not bad. It's gonna go nice like for my wintertime solar, right? Cause this, this roof is so flat. I mean, look at the difference, right? And I can't afford like an adjustable stand. So the way I'm doing it is like, that's, those are my summertime panels, right? Because they're, they're just a little flatter. And, and these are my, win, uh, my wintertime panels. Uh, they're, they're slightly more west facing, uh, southwest facing, and they're at 45 degrees. And the, the reason why I have them just slightly more west is because the, these ones are due, these are solar south, right? They're like due solar south. And I found, if we come over to my, <clears throat> to my well pump here, and I'll try to get an angle so you guys can see what I mean. But these, these are actually at Magnetic South, right? So my brother installed these ones. And he put them at Magnetic South, which is not the same as Solar South, right? There's, there's a difference. So you can kind of see, these are all at different angles. See this? And what I found is that my panels on that shed get way more morning sun than these panels do right because um <clears throat> these are facing more west and so when the sun comes up this way over here you know they're they're not really getting a lot of sun and so i i like that i like getting that that you know 6 a.m charge and the only <clears throat> thing that's really holding these panels back from getting even more juice are these trees right so the sun comes up this way like this and it gets trapped behind those trees and my, my panels are in the shade. I'm gonna turn the camera around. My panels are in the shade this time of year here at the end of September till like nine in the morning. But these panels up here, up high on the shipping container, they're gonna get hit first thing. Or, I mean, not first thing, but you know, an hour after the sun comes up, these things are gonna start pulling a little bit of charge in. So after I'm done setting these up, I've got these, I should be at, I think five, 5.5 thousand kilowatts at that point. So we'll see. Here we go. You guys are literally balancing on a freaking pine cone right now. Oh, there you go. What's up? Man, these boards are warped. Just warped. Well, it is what it is. So something I'm, I'm doing since people are gonna say something, I'm bolting these to the back. So, <clears throat> you can see here, they're bolted through. So let's see down here if I can organize this camera, you guys can see the, the bolt heads, right? So they're bolted through, and I've got this lip on the bottom. See that? So I just like, put this two by four down there so the panels are sitting sitting on them and they're bolted because they're really just giant sails you know the and the wind where i live comes this direction towards these so it's really gonna and i'm gonna bolt this uh this whole frame it's on a it's on a pressure treated uh two by eight right here i'm gonna bolt that and then the back side when i run aboard across the back uh through the shipping container so they, they shouldn't go anywhere ho hopefully <laughs> All right, so I got all four of them up there. Turned out pretty good. I gotta make all those braces and those supports. These are just sitting up there. I haven't bolted them through yet. Um, so I've got room. To add it. This is what I'm gonna do, right? I've got a fifth panel 
it's down there. I'm gonna order another one and I've got exactly enough room to fit two more right here. So I'll have six facing this south position. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna add two more panels to the rear, 45ing this way, facing due west. Let's flip the camera around. Uh, the reason I'm gonna do that is because I really want the sunset sun, you know, to also be charging my panel or my batteries. And the reason why is because like I work a full, you know, basically nine to five, right? Doing HVAC. Like I don't get home till later um, in the day. And then my mom lives up here and she's also on this same solar. This is her little cabin. It's a shed that we flipped into a cabin. And she works a regular nine to five. Now, so the, the issue is, is that we shower, we do dishes and we do all those things when we get home, right? I, I mean, I don't, I don't go to sleep without taking a shower, right? I'm basically a mechanic. I'm pretty dirty every day. And so point being is we use a lot of power um, at the end of the day. So I really want that, those last just two panels, you know, it'll be, I'll get two 450 watt panels, get, uh, you know, 900 watts right there, end of the day, get that sunset sun. So just as I, we're using up the juice in our batteries, start really using it when these are just, these panels will have nothing on them. Um, we'll have a little bit of juice left because our, our steady usage is about 345 watts. That's like our regular kind of floating usage when my mom's home and I'm home. And then my wife and kids is about 350 watts just floating until like an appliance kicks on. But that's like my mom's got a freezer, like a deep freezer. We've got a deep freezer. She's got a fridge with a freezer. We have a fridge with a freezer, right? So those are our like appliances. Then we got lights. So the biggest appliance I have is my pump. And my mom also has a pump, right? Um, and when those come on, that's really what takes the, the most juice. So anyways, I don't really like filming myself working. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it may be because I don't, uh, I don't have like a GoPro on a stand or something. Um, but also I feel like I have to change the name of my channel to like, uh, how not to build something. Cause all my stuff is, it's all farmer stuff. So anyways, uh, I'm going to get some conduit, get some wire and I'm going to start, uh, wiring all this stuff up, digging a trench, uh, to run my conduit in. And, uh, I'll show you guys how I'm going to go about doing all that. So if you're setting up a solar system, you know, you can, you can get something out of this. Here we go. Okay, so we're hooking up the panels. Let's make this super simple. That little box on the left over there, that's where I'm headed to, okay? So I've got, here's some panels. Here's two panels right here, right? So I've got the positive and the negative connected here, right? Going down to the next two, the positive and the negative connected here. So what I'm left over with is a positive, a negative, a positive and a negative. So then I run longer cables from those spares like this and I'm running it to the positive and the negative in that breaker box. All right, the kids are here. You guys will have to listen to them in the background. So I haven't secured this yet. I know it's like totally crooked, but the panels are hooked up. Um, I've got the conduit here, dug some trench, running the conduit up here, right? It's just four panels. So, uh, you know, two positives going into the breakers and then the, it parallels after the breakers right there. And then uh, two negatives going into the negative and then it parallels there. So yeah, they're all black wires, guys. Um, black wires are cheaper and uh, that's what I had. So I'm using black wires to just label them beforehand and uh, we're good to go. Into the shed. Okay, then now everything's hooked up. So that's the positive wire coming in from uh, that from those new panels on the shipping container. Goes to this 40 amp breaker, comes down to the charge controller. And then uh, right now I've just got it off because my batteries are full. I don't want to turn it on. I'm going to do it tomorrow when they need to get charged. Um, goes to a 100 amp breaker on the output before it goes to the bus bar and the battery. So yeah, I just made these. Well, this is some scrap plastic I had laying around, some spare DIN rail. So I just whipped them up. It's some farmer stuff, um, but you know, it, 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 you know, it works. It's real sloppy, 
but it's all, you know, I got breakers, I got fuses, the wire's all oversized, it's all fine stranded, you know, it's, it's safe, and, uh, you know, I'm good with the functionality, so, one more thing I'm doing in here is I'm just, I'm building the box over here, and I'm insulating all this, and I'm gonna put my, my water tank and this pump that's leaking currently in this box. I'm gonna make a lid here and uh, insulate it so this stuff doesn't freeze um, in the winter. Okay, I wanted to go off on some other tangents. I'm just feeding my, my male Pyrenees. He's a 50% Pyrenees, 50% Anatolian. My son named him, his name's Chowie. He's hilarious, he's like 150 pounds. Uh, I was gonna show this too because I'm really happy about it, but you guys have never seen seen what it looks like before. But you guys should have seen my wood stove pipe before I just did all this work. I mean, it was like it was it was canted in the wrong direction. Um, it wasn't high enough. It didn't have any of those braces on it. It didn't have anything to hold it. Like check it. So <clears throat> this is what it looks like now. Now I know there's no like before and after, but I really beefed up this through the wall support and I went up pretty high and I climbed up on my roof and put those braces, put those braces on there. It is a shit brick house now. It won't go anywhere. I mean, it gets really windy up here. So you, you have to have those braces and uh, I'm really happy with it. And another thing here, look at these goats. Look at these goats. See this? See how fat this goat is? This is a Nigerian dwarf goat. Look at it. Look how fat they are. They're all pregnant. All four of my does are pregnant. <laughs> and they're gonna, I'm gonna be kidding in the winter. This is my first time. And uh, it's gonna be in the winter. Not, <laughs> not ideal. Uh, anyways. Just a little bit of what I'm I'm dealing with. So let's go check on the chickens too. Let's see what they're up to. Anyways, uh, I used to put up YouTube videos, um, you know, when I first moved out here, and I took I ended up taking them down, taking the channel down. I just didn't feel like I, you know, wanted to do it. And I wish I still had some because my my stovepipe was horrific. So, um, but I'm proud of it now. So it looks like my chickens need some water. Here's some chickens. I got some brown sex links I've had for a while. I've got some silkies here, one silky rooster. I've got some more, there they are coming out. And uh, I've got a buttercup around here somewhere, but I think they need some food and water. So this is the state of their coop, not great. Uh, could really use some attention, like some gable ends. <laughs> and I'm hoping to do that this winter. All right, off to the solar panels. Let's see, we got three, six, eight. 10, 11, and then one of that silky female lays over here. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 eggs for one day. That's, that's, 16 eggs in a day is pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. All right, for those of you who want to see the bracing, uh, this is how I do things. My kids are here. This is how we build things with kids off grid. So this is the bracing that I've got going on. I've got... I need more wood so I'm not finished, right? Because I've got to go, I got to go underneath across from this to over there on every single one. But I got 45s and then I've got, you know, everything connected on the top and the bottom all the way across. And then I have metal, you know, metal straps um, that connect these as well, crossing them, right? The whole way down. So, you know, some people might say this is kind of overkill. Um, but I'm not an engineer, and when you're just doing things on your own, like I'm making up stuff as I go, right? Like, uh, it's better to just overbuild things. You know, there's a lot of snow here. These are at a 45. They're probably not going to hold snow for very long because I'm also going to be getting the snow off of them pretty quick. Um, still, it's uh, better better to overbuild. It, it gets real windy up here. It gets real snowy. So, you know, I don't think uh, I don't think this thing's going anywhere. So, all right, see ya.